Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to use Excel and go through a couple of examples using Muskinga method. First, we're going to do an example of applying Muskinga method. Um, so we're going to be given inflow and be given our coefficients, our k and our x values, and calculate outflow. And then I'll go through a second example where I uh, try to calibrate for k and x. Um, these examples are written out in the handout linked on Camino, and you will also find the Excel that I'm using so you can follow along if you want to. Okay, so I am going to go ahead, share my screen here, and we'll see how this goes. Okay, so in the first example, we're studying a reach of a stream that's 13 kilometers long, and there's flooding concerns at the end of the stream reach where the river enters a small city. You've developed a design hydrograph for a 25-year storm at the upstream end of the reach, and you aren't sure if the flood peak at the downstream end of the river reach will be much lower than the 275 CMS peak in your design hydrograph. Fortunately, you have, there have been studies of this river for many years, and they have determined the Muskingum routing parameters of k equals 2.4 hours and x equals 0.1 for this reach. So we are given this inflow hydrograph. And what we want to do is we want to figure out the outflow hydrograph downstream, 13 kilometers downstream, to see if we still are below our 25-year flood storm um, uh, and if we're below the 275 CMS peak. Okay, so I'm going to start this by creating a table um, where I have time and inflow. These were both given in the problem statement. We're really looking for outflow. And so to do that, we are going to apply this equation here, which I just highlighted. Um, so I need O2 is going to be CO times I2 plus C1 times I1 plus C2 times O1, where my CO, C1, and C2 are given here. Okay, and so they're calculated from our, um, our delta T and our K and our X. So this problem statement, we're given K, so I'm going to come up here and type that the k is 2.4 hours, my x is 0 0.1, and my delta t, I'm going to use two hours because that's what my uh, info hydrograph was given as a time step of two hours. All right, so hopefully I'll do this correctly, and I'm going to attempt to type in here each of these e uh, equations. I'm going to pause the recording to type that in. Okay, so here I have in, if you look up in the formula bar, we have um, delta T over K, so two divided by the 2.4 minus two times X, which is our 0.1. That whole thing is divided by two times one minus X plus delta T over delta K. So I'll hit enter and there we go. We're gonna do the same thing here for C1 and C2. Okay, so now I've gone and put in the formulas for C0, C1, and C2, I'm just following along with these equations given over here. The first check that I can do here is sum these three values and they should equal one. And that will just tell me, okay, they, they do equal one so that I probably entered these formulas in properly, okay? So now I'm going to use C0, C1, and C2 and calculate the three terms in the outflow equation, and then we'll sum them all together. So I'm going to come down to, um, at time zero, these are all going to be zero. Your outflow is equal to your inflow at time zero, so we're going to start at two hours. And so I'm going to type in here equals C0. I'm going to make sure that I have the dollar signs on B6 because I want to make sure I'm always using that particular cell. I'm gonna multiply that by I2, so that's inflow at this second time. Then I'm gonna to add to that C1, and again, I'm gonna make sure that I have the dollar signs here, and I'm gonna multiply that by I1, so that's the inflow at the previous time step. And then I'm gonna to add to that C2, and again, let's put those dollar signs on there. And I'm going to multiply that by the outflow at the previous time step. 
there we go. Except I just did all three steps in one. So let's do this. We, in this first one, we only want C0 times I2. So let's take all of these out. So I'm going to hit open Apple X to cut that. Sorry, or command X. And then I will paste those here. Quickly change that to an equal sign. And then again, cut off this second part and paste it. There we go. Okay, now my outflow is going to be these three sum together. And there we go. All right, so I'm just going to highlight all four of these cells, copy this down, which allows it to paste. And then I have my outflow. And you can see when you come down here to this figure that the outflow is less than the inflow for all time periods, which is what we expect. Um, and we could continue this, like let's say we did 26 and it's back down to 100. Eventually we can find that maybe um, this is gonna go down, the outflow will go down to 100 when there's not a storm coming through. So you could see how long it takes to get back down to the base flow as well. Okay, so that is how you apply Muskingum method. Um, again, you wanna do those checks, especially make sure you've typed it in right, your C0, C1, and C2 all sum to zero. Um, we could also check our K versus our delta T. Um, make sure that we, uh, so if I do um, two times K times X, we want our delta T to be in between these two values. Two times K times one minus X. So we want our t to in, be in between 0 0.48 and 4.32. We have our t as 2, so we hit that check. We can also see if we are in between k over 3 and k. And we are with our delta t, so we are good there as well. So it seems to me that this checks out and is a valid calculation. Okay, so hopefully going through that example in Excel was helpful and you can use this to complete an assignment. Okay, so our second example, we are given the measured inflow and outflow hydrograph shown here. And we are basically trying to calibrate and find our K and our X. And so Gupta does outline the steps to take. And so we're gonna follow those steps here, okay? And so we'll come to this plot in a little bit when we calibrate it. But my first step um, is going to be to calculate uh, column D, which is gonna be the inflow minus the outflow for each time. Okay, so I'm gonna do the inflow minus the outflow. And we'll get a time series for inflow minus outflow. All right, so you can see here that it is, I'm gonna quick make a quick plot here of this. So I'm gonna insert my, so I'm gonna insert a scatter plot here just to show, okay, so here's my inflow minus my outflow, just to show what's happening. So what this is saying is that for the first five hours, the inflow is greater than the outflow. So that would suggest that we're rising up to the peak, um, which is when you can see the peak happens at five hours. And then after that, we have the outflow greater than the inflow. So we're probably on the downward slope. And because everything is shifted in the outflow by a certain amount of time, there's gonna be a lag, right? Okay. So um, also remember what we're looking at here in the, on the x-axis, this is time and hours. And on the y-axis, inflow minus outflow, 
this is going to be a cubic feet per second calculation. Okay, so I accidentally stopped my recording. So sorry if there's some weird pause and I'll try and stitch those two together. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the storage in each time period. And I want to show you using a little annotation here what that really means. And so what I'm doing here is I'm calculating the area under this curve, okay? And there's lots of ways. We know lots of different ways to calculate the area under the curve. This goes back to calculus. And this is like one of the things I love is being able to use calculus. Um, so again, there's many ways to do this. What I'm going to do is basically find the average value between the um, inflow minus outflow, use that as my height. And so this is kind of like a trapezoidal rule, right? And use this and find this area. Okay, so that's the area that I'm going to be finding up here in my first line. And so what that's going to look like, actually, I'm going to put that one in. So I'm going to put that one in for time one. So at time zero, I'm going to have a storage of zero. Okay. At time one, I'm going to take the average. So I'm going to take the 1227, which is the inflow minus the outflow at time one hour. I'm going to add to that the inflow minus the outflow at the previous time, in this case, time zero, and divide by two. Okay. And we get 614. All right. So that is the storage at an approximation for the storage during the first hour. I'm going to repeat that for all the time. So in that second hour, what's happening here is I'm going to average between these two points and my storage is going to be this. So I'm expecting it to be a little bit more just based on the, the look of the graph than what I had in the previous time step. So let's see if that's true. This is going to be Nope, I'd already calculated it. It's going to be the 1227 plus the 962 divided by 2. Okay, so I continue this for the entire time series, and eventually you, you will notice, so at time 6, for example, um, but let's actually draw the one for time 7. We are now negative. We have a negative storage, so that's the storage here underneath the curve. Okay, so this is the time 7. So that's the storage at each time step. It's the area under the curve. And again, it's an approximation. Lots of ways to do this. You could use the left-hand side, right-hand side. I'm doing kind of like a midpoint. The next thing I'm going to do is calculate the cumulative storage. So that's going to start at zero. And then at time one hour, I'm going to have the storage from the previous time step plus the cumulative storage. So that's going to be 614. Okay, in this next one, I'm going to start at 614 and I'm going to add to that the 1095. All right, so you can see how this is going to go. I'm going to drag this down so it copies the formula so that we have our cumulative storage. All right, so the next thing I'm going to calculate is this weighted flow. And the weighted flow, I give the formula up here. Here's the formula that I'm going to be using. Okay, so it's x, and so x is one of the parameters that I'm trying to calibrate for. So I'm going to take a guess at my x, so you'll see that in a second, times i, the inflow at the current time, plus 1 minus x times outflow. So this is like a weighted in between how much is from the inflow and how much is from the outflow. So that's where the weight comes in. Okay, so I'm going to scroll up here, and so in order to do that, I'm going to clear this clear my drawings, otherwise they're going to look a little funky. All right, so I'm going to take a guess here at x. So remember that an, an x is usually, be, it's always between 0 and 0 0.5, and for natural streams, it's um, usually between like 0 0.01 and 0 0.03. So let's just start with an x of 0 0.2 and see what happens. Actually, I'm going to change my mind, and I'm going to start with a, an x of 0, okay? Uh, which means that's going to be completely outflow. So my weighted flow, again, is going to be equal to x. I don't want that to change, so I'm going to put dollar signs on there, times the inflow 
plus one minus X. Again, keep that at that cell times the outflow. All right, so I'm gonna copy this all the way down. Okay, so what is going on with my figure? All right, so what I want to be plotting is the, is the weighted flow, which I just calculated on my x-axis. Um, and then I want the accumulated storage on the y. So I was messing around with this and it got a little messed up. Um, I'm gonna fix that real quick just by dragging this over and that looks better. Okay, so let me make these a little bit bigger for us so we can see them better. I'm gonna format my data series and come over. I always mess up where these are, the marker. And I am going to do my marker options and increase the size to about 10. All right, then we can see them a little better. Okay, so you might notice here, hopefully, um, this actually does look a little bit better if we add the line on it. So let's just add a solid line here. All right, so this is a circle. Um, and this is actually what we expected. Uh, and it means that we're not quite calibrated. What we would like to do is change our X so that we get a straight line, which means that um, going out as your storage increases and then as it decreases, you're on the same line. And we do that by changing X. So this is for X equals zero. If I make X, let's just be really dramatic, 0.5. Okay, that's still a circle. Um, but it's likely that somewhere in the middle, so there's point 0.1, it becomes closer to a straight line. So that's point 0.2. Let's try point 0.3. All right, so point 0.3, when I do x equals point 0.3, these are really close to a straight line. So I would say that x equals point 0.3 is the correct value. Now we need to figure out what to do for our k. And the way that you find k is by adding a trend line here and finding the slope. Okay, so you can do this quite simply um, in, I'm gonna display the equation on the chart here and we are looking for the, uh, this will become our K. So according to this, our X is 1.3 and our K is the slope of the line when we are on a straight line instead of having the curve go out and then back in and our k is 1.3. Okay so now we have calibrated for this particular storm. If we really wanted to use the Skinga method really what we should do is calibrate for many storms and get an aggregate value for both x and k which is likely what happened in the previous example um, when we were doing the application. Okay. So hopefully um, seeing me do this in Excel was helpful and you can attempt the um, problems. All right, that's all I got for you for now. So I'll see you soon.